Welcome back. Now, it is August, and some people are very upset about billboards. Apparently, this is something that happens in August. OnlyFans model Eliza Rose Watson paid for these giant posters advertising her X-rated subscription content for several sites across London and New York. They've sparked a flurry of complaints to the UK's advertising watchdog, which today ruled these billboards were not, quote, overtly sexual, and therefore are quite all right to have up. But furious campaigners want them banned, arguing that they are normalising obscenity. So do they have a point? For more on this, I'm joined by the OnlyFans model at the centre of the route, Eliza Rose Watson, and the political commentator, Lauren Chen. Ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Eliza, first of all, you must be relieved, obviously, that the billboards are staying up. Um, and... What do you make of the arguments that this is inappropriate and obscene? Well, firstly, you know, I am encouraged and um, pleased that the ASA have ruled what they've ruled. Um, I think in general, what I make of the argument is, you know, it's understandable in a sense that if someone doing something new, there's a lot of misconception about what OnlyFans is and what OnlyFans isn't. But OnlyFans is now a household name. It's no good denying it or pushing it under the carpet. That's what's going to do damage. Mm. You know, we need to face it. We need to talk about it. We need to not really focus as much on whether it's right or wrong, whether people should be doing it or shouldn't be doing it. The fact is they are doing it. It's here to stay. We should be focusing on how we approach it. Is turning a blind eye to it realistic, let alone helpful? Is banning it and shaming it? just an old, outdated, archaic approach, which has never really worked for any societal issue. I think that's where I'm yeah, coming okay, from. Okay, interesting. The argument does come off a lot about um, sex work and OnlyFans is somewhat in the remit of that. Uh, for anyone who's not aware, I feel like everyone in the world is aware of what OnlyFans is, but it's when people pay uh, content creators for pretty sexy pictures, sexual pictures, and they can be to the very pornographic end or to the lighter end as well. We've just shown you some pictures there that were softened for our evening audience. Lauren Chen uh, joins us now as well. Lauren, um, do you buy that argument that we should be more accepting of this type of work in society? Otherwise, if we clamp down on it, then it will be worse for a lot of women. Well, I think we are plenty accepting already as a society. People are perfectly able to start OnlyFans accounts, and not only that, but become very financially successful for a slim minority. I think that includes Eliza. The question we are talking about here is, is it appropriate, is it okay to advertise pornography in places where children can see it? You mentioned that some of these billboards are right next to a school. And in my opinion, the answer is clearly no. And I have to say, Eliza, regardless of what the overall watchdog ruling is, that doesn't mean that you as a business owner as the person who is sponsoring these billboards needs to keep them up, especially the ones that I think are, are under the most controversy, which are the ones near the school. You are able to take them down. There are other ways you can advertise for your OnlyFans account, including, I would say, appearing on this show that don't expose children to this, to the concept of pornography, uh, you know, young girls, the idea of selling their bodies, young boys, the idea that women are commodities. There are other ways to go about this, even if you insist on having an OnlyFans account that would draw a lot less fire from parents, especially. Let's uh, give Eliza a chance to respond to that. But also, uh, according to the information I've got, the billboards, uh, one of which is located around 450 metres from a school, which is a fair distance. And the Advertising Standards Agency did come back and said, look, these billboards are all around New York and London. Children walk around those cities all the time. They're going to see them anyway. Whether or not the ruling is correct or not, I mean, people have different opinions on that. But Eliza, I mean, your chance to respond there. Are you advertising pornography widely? Is it necessary to do that? That's what Lauren's saying. I think my intention behind the ads was to do exactly this, to start a discussion. That's what my intention was, and I think that's been achieved. I will point out I'm not the first person to put an OnlyFans logo on an advert. There are boxers and Formula One drivers that have the OnlyFans logo in exactly the same way on their helmets, on their shorts, on their clothing. I think the issue here is people are putting two and two together with a woman in the logo. I will also say the only overt reference to pornography on my ad was the graffiti on it. And this is what sparked the press I got and ultimately all the attention this has received. The ad was very clearly designed for adults. I'm a 34 year old woman. All my social media audience is between the ages of 25 and 35 and 98.8% male. Um, I will also point out that in the same vicinity, there were alcohol ads on bus stops, presumably where these children would sit and wait for a bus home from school. 
The only difference is that conversations have been had around alcohol. That's the difference. And this is what I'm starting to do here. The other thing is just because there's an ad with a bottle of beer on it, it doesn't mean a child or a minor could walk straight into an off license and buy a beer. They'd have to provide ID. And what people don't understand about OnlyFans is the same applies there. It's actually even harder. Even as a creator, when I buy a new mobile phone, I have to physically call up my network provider, provide mm. ID and a credit card in order to even mm. access the platform. And that's even without subscribing. I just want to ask, I think those are all really good points to raise, you know, the alcohol one as well. That Lauren's point about um, the money aspect of this and the attention you've received, you said your intention behind it was to raise this debate. Of course, that has created more marketing for you and you're going to receive likely more customers and more money from this. Um, was that part of it as well? Not really. I didn't expect any real increase in revenue from the billboards. Um, as you might know, we already advertise, we advertise online. Um, I think as well, like the point around it was again, to just raise a discussion. And I'd also like to add at this point, the ads do not glorify or glamorize the use of OnlyFans in any way. And I will make this point about the money. The money can be really good for a small minority, as was mentioned. However, there are great sacrifices to be made for people who do OnlyFans. You post a sexy picture on even Instagram, it's there for your whole life. And mm. it's a short lived, it's a very short lived career. So these are the kind of things that I think we need to be talking about. Lauren. Um, and it so, sorry, Eliza, we're just running short of time. I just want to ask uh, Lauren final words, uh, whether you're convinced by any of this. Well, I, I think it's somewhat silly to say that the billboards weren't done, at least in part, for increased revenue. That's the point of billboards and advertising. And I appreciate that Eliza does bring out uh, the fact that there are downsides to OnlyFans. But the thing is, that's not what's mentioned on this billboard. On this billboard, there's simply her provocative pose, a link to her social media and OnlyFans accounts. And uh, obviously, ch uh, children should have their social media usage monitored by parents. But at the same time, I don't think it's too much to ask for people who make pornography like Eliza to not directly market to children, which is in part what she is doing there are other ways she could advertise where you wouldn't have this fur where they wouldn't uh be exposed to children but she is i think specifically trying to normalize and mainstream she even said only fans which is not a good thing this is not a positive for society for men or for women it's eliza. interesting oh go on quickly eliza because statistically teenagers are way more likely to be exposed to sexual imagery on places like Facebook than they are OnlyFans. I obviously would never purposely have put this ad next to a school. However, I think it's actually quite nice. So you quite can take it down. You can take it down at any point. You're the one paying for it. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be there. Regardless of what it the agency down. says, you have the ability to take it down. I did six days after the complaints. It came down. So, so, so you I, agree with, the, I guess, the complaints in that case? Not particularly, no. I, I agree with the fact I would not like to be directly directly marketing at children. However, it's naive. What I was going to say is it's naive to assume that a teenager with a mobile phone would not have seen imagery like this before. And this I find con concerning, the fact that people don't know that or just don't want to accept it. The point of the, the ads, and I think they've achieved the point, is to start this discussion and, and maybe raise more adults. We are yeah. fresh out of time. We have had that discussion. We appreciate both your points of view.